Okay, give me a guess. The song is called Message in a Bottle. Yellow card. <laughs> Uh, Not a real guess. That was a real guess. I mean, for him it is. The guy singing is named Sting, but goes by Sting. Uh, I know Sting. He plays in um, Led Zeppelin. No. Come on. You have a tenuous relationship with these people. That's why you drive so slow. Wait. Well, well, it's a trio. A... They've been broken up for a long, long time. Reunited briefly some years ago. Sting went off to do a solo thing. Mm-hmm. This was the band. The reason why I Once he so came. Yep. Uh, you don't want to get on their radar. The Flashing Lights? Mm-hmm. Yes, the band is called The Flashing Lights. <laughs> you have a tenuous relationship with The Flashing Lights. Police is the band I was looking oh. for. Sting and the Police. Message in a bottle off their second album. It was called Regatta de Blanc, which is French for white reggae, because these guys first and foremost considered themselves kind of a reggae band. That's mm, like, where all the beats were from, and, you know. But there's nothing more exciting, or at least few things more exciting, than if you are on a beach, ideally in another country. And that alone is great. But if you're on a beach and you find a bottle, you see, has this ever happened to you? Have you ever seen a bottle wash up on the shore? The one time it happened to me, it turned out that the bottle was just from further down the beach. It had kind of gotten pushed out and then... It gets treasure. Yeah, but you (laughs) get that thing in your head where you're like, oh my God, this is, you know, again, the physics of it, I'm not sure, you know, if if you could ever really count on a bottle going across... A massive, massive body of water, but now it some, would be exciting. Not without some stupid turtle messing with it. Something messing with it. But an Australian couple way up in Australia, far north Queensland. So you're talking the northernmost part of Australia. I don't know what the body of water is there that surrounds it, but, you know, it's way out there. These two are walking along the beach. And a bottle washes up. And obviously, they're very, very excited to see what the message is inside because they can see that it's got a piece of paper in it. And so they they get out there into the surf and they scoop up that bottle and they open it up. I'm seeing a bottle here. What's that? Looks like it's got a message in it. Wonga Beach. Just would open it up and see what's going on here. First one ever. First message in a bottle. Here lies... Oh, they're ashes. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, no. I know. Here lies the ashes of Jeffrey. If found, please throw bottle into outgoing tide so I can continue my journey. Oops. I know. I know. Yeah, ashes. The, the paper was in a bottle with ashes. Hey, if you find this... Put it back. <laughs> why not just put it in the ocean? Like... In a bottle? Right. Because somebody's going to find that bottle. What an A-level troll, man. That's awesome. I know the ashes. You see what's in there? Who I know. You, who do you think it was? Is it a up on the beach? Is someone named Jeffrey? Do you know anyone named Jeffrey? I don't. What, is he a cousin named Jeffrey? No, my cousin's name is <laughs> Nigel. <laughs> your, your cousin's name is Nigel? Nigel! <laughs> And what you saw on a honeymoon? He's, you met him, <laughs> Nigel Ozyman. Yes, Nigel, Nigel Ozyman. You met Who's him. your cousin that died by the uh, the mauling? That was the other Nigel. Two Nigels. Yes. Well, yeah. they are the same grandparents. Right, you. We yeah. should throw these ashes of Jeffrey back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> which I was getting mauled by a dog right now. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're not yours, Bill. <laughs> the day is still young. Listen. No, it's not that you guys are good at it. No, we're very, very good at it. No, she's great. I can't yeah. do we're that. We're both very good. I know. Um, the speaking of dogs, uh, our buddy Zach, who's a longtime listener to this show, uh, sadly had to put his dog down. Am I hearing that correctly? Yes. How old was the dog? Well, two weeks old or something like that. <gasps> no, it was. <laughs> oh my God, don't do that. Two weeks. <laughs> I don't know. This is an old dog. An old dog. Yeah. And he had to put it down. Yeah. It's older than two sad, weeks. It's sad. It's sad. It's very sad. Right. All Where right. But he wants to be up? cheered up. Oh. Well, cheer him up with a classic. Casey Kasem, 
and a little dog. Was it Snuggles or Cuddles? I've heard it a billion times. I don't know that I've ever really paid attention. I think it's Snuggles. 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 Okay. Dear Casey, this may seem to be a strange dedication request, but I'm quite sincere, and it'll mean a lot if you play it. Recently, there was a death in our family. He was a little dog named Snuggles, but he was most certainly a part of... Let's come start again. I'm coming out of the record. Play the record, okay? Please. See, when you come out of those up-tempo goddamn numbers, man, it's impossible to make those transitions. And then you got to go into somebody dying. You know, they do this to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they do it for, but goddamn it, if we can't come out of a slow record, I don't understand it. Is Don on the phone? Okay, I want a goddamn concerted effort to come out of a record that isn't a fucking up-tempo record every time I do a goddamn death dedication. Now, make it, and I also want to know what happened to the pictures I was supposed to see this week. This is a god, last goddamn time. I want somebody who uses fucking brain to not come out of a goddamn record that is, uh, that, that's up-tempo, and I got to talk about a fucking dog dying. Mm-hmm. There you go. I want to know what the pictures are still. <laughs> We've heard this so many times. We still don't know what pictures are that he was supposed to see. Those pictures had to have gone somewhere. They had to have ended up in, you know, that right. clip obviously is 40 years old, but uh, th those photos had to be somewhere. That's Maybe they're in a beach. box. Maybe they're in a, they're in a message in safety a deposit hmm. box. Yeah. If found, please return these dogs' ashes. Hey, Gaylord. Hey, Mr. Cox. Mm -hmm. Hello, Mr. Squire, and hello, Miss Santora. Hi. I just wanted to thank you uh, for talking about me, <laughs> about Gaylord, Michigan. Uh, that made me proud that you uh, mentioned me. So thank you all. And Have you ever been to Gaylord, Michigan? Rest. Unfortunately, no. Mm. But, There's nothing uh, there. I would, I would love to just to see what my namesake is. Oh yeah, they've but, really, really done a lot with it up there. You can be really happy when you get up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard you say. Right. But you guys make me laugh. I was coming home from the dentist. And I heard you, and I almost drove into the ditch. Oh, I hope not. So, Everything okay with the uh, with the chompers there, Gaylord? Oh yeah, oh. I uh, I don't. Uh, I have uh, Doc Painless taking care of me, Doctor Bay, and he does a great job there mm -hmm. in uh, uh, Oberlin. So. Hey, I just wanted to say again that I loved your radio show. Thank you, man. It's wonderful. Thank you for your entertainment all my life. Here. Gaylord. Thanks. Gaylord, before yes. you go, um, there's a lot of people that they don't like when you call. I want you to, what's your message for your haters? Yeah, that's right. You tell these people where to stick it. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh I love everybody. I'm, I'm great. coming up my 69th birthday, and nice. I'm fighting and arguing, and hey, if you don't like me, I'm sorry. Uh, That's what I, I am say. what I am. That's I what I say. You tell him, Gaylord. Okay, thank you, Gaylord. Yeah. You take care of them choppers. He hit him with the Popeye. I am what I am, <laughs> I am what I and am. that's all that I am. Mm -hmm. Maybe he and Pound Cake have the same dentist. We don't. He has a dentist. Poundcake, is your demo done? Yes. Wait, Cody made a demo? Wait a second. Rapping? What do you mean he has a dentist? I don't have a dentist. Yeah, let's not go past that too quickly. <laughs> you don't have a dentist? No, I don't have a dentist. Why? Because I don't have insurance. Well, a lot of people don't have insurance, but they still have a dentist. I don't have a specific dentist. I, I will go to... Oh, actually, no, I do have insurance, and I... I went to a dentist. But no, I don't know if this is like my main dentist. I just went there to get a checkup. And did that go okay? So you go for cleanings a couple times a year? What's the extent of your I've, dental? I've gone for one cleaning or uh, for a uh, exam this year. They did the x-ray and everything. And I didn't have any cavities. Okay. They just did a basic cleaning and that was it. Gotcha. Okay. But like this, this was the first time since I've had like my whatever free insurance. So, so you, but... Okay, so you just went to a dentist. You're just saying you don't have a regular dentist. Correct. Gotcha. I haven't had a dentist since I was on my mom's insurance. Hmm.
Okay. I mean, I think overall, a dentist is a good thing to have. Whether it's your regular one or a random dentist. You find a dentist. I got a lot of um, messages from our black listeners who are really mad at Pound Cake talking about soul food. Oh, my God. Did you see the Nate Marquette's uh, soul so food good. sketch? The whole episode was good. I hadn't watched SNL in a while, yeah. and I was like, I'm going to watch this one because Nate's funny, and I want to see what he does. It was a very good episode. Well, everything's just funny. written really well for him. It's not even like he had to do a lot of heavy lifting, but right. he just, his dry delivery just worked really good for the sketches that they put together. And the uh, the cooking show one was hysterical. <laughs> and you knew that's the way it was going to go, too, yeah, but right it was on, still yeah. really funny. Pound Cake has a white palate, Derek says. What he described as soul food was the southern food the masters were served. <laughs> Alan, you got soul. You know soul food's all rooters and tutors. Oh, I know that because we were talking about chitlins, and Pound Cake doesn't like that. He likes... He likes, yeah, the food that the masters were served. That's what he likes. And that's okay. No, what can I say? That's what his... <laughs> I, would, I mean... That's what his palate is. You know what black people would say about me? If I have a white palate, that means I was probably eating in the house. <laughs> so... <that's... laughs> this guy. Says never finished. Master got me working. Someday master set me free. I don't like that. I didn't like... I didn't... If I don't like the you don't smell, like rooters and tooters. If I don't like the smell, he's not animal I'm ones. Not, if I don't like the smell of something, I'm not eating it. If, if yeah, smell, I hear that, guys. Mm -hmm. Tread lightly. <laughs> the smell messes with my brain, and I'm like, I'm I don't care uh, how good chitlins are. Like, I don't want to eat it if it smells like that. If that's what it smells like being cooked, I don't want it after it's cooked. Oh, I'm not saying they're great. I'm just saying that's kind of fundamental to, like, OG soul food. And then, like, mac and cheese, I don't like the texture of Yeah, the nobody cheese. says, if somebody says, what's your favorite soul food, nobody jumps to mac and cheese. A lot of people will say mac and cheese. It can be part of it, but nobody's first answer is going to be mac and cheese. And I haven't had greens since my grandmother passed away, so. Greens. Have I? Yeah, pretty good. Mary had a big uh, meal this morning. Oh, I went to breakfast right here at uh, Addie's Diner. We all know where I sit on breakfast. I had a nice little three-egg omelet, some hash browns and toast. We all know where you sit on breakfast? That I love a big breakfast. <laughs> it's, this is well-tread ground, that I'm I a know. big breakfast I man. thought you meant where you sit in the diner. Oh, no. <laughs> we all know where I sit. Um, you back guys to, know my table seat, Back to the window. Face Addie's. to the door, John Gotti style. <laughs> But I'm sitting there enjoying my breakfast, and this lady comes and sits next to me, and she's yammering. She's talking, 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 talking. She seemed very... To you. Yeah, she's just talking. Oh, what's that? That looks really good. Oh, how did the... What are those potatoes? Older and, woman, younger woman? Um, I'm mid-40s, maybe. No, this okay. is what I call a punisher. Someone that well, in public will just talk your ear off when you are not engaging in the conversation. It doesn't bother me. I did I, engage. You, Mary likes oh, to talk. You're <laughs> you yeah. know who you I am. Are the, I'm telling her. You're oh, kind of a punisher yourself. I got so. the vet. But I don't ever start it. I was oh, like, I got the veggie man. omelet, add ham, add cheese, get the potatoes extra crispy. You know, I'm going to give her tips. And I asked her, um, I said, you've never been here before? Ba, ba, she, ba, goes, ba, ba, ba. she goes, no, I don't really get to come downtown that much, but I was downtown last weekend. I said, oh, what were you doing downtown last weekend? She said, I went to the Ryan Hamilton show. I said, interesting. I said, did you have fun? She was like, it was great. Um, she said, his opener seemed a little confused. She has no idea that you know. <laughs> confused. She has no idea that I know Bill. Yeah. Okay? Love this. So we're talking. Again, I haven't said a word yeah. about radio. We have literally talked about breakfast. That's it. And now it's pivoted to the Ryan Hamilton show. Mm -hmm. And I said, what do you mean he seemed confused? She's like, well, you know how like, stand-up comedy goes. I was like, yeah, I've been to a couple shows. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I said, what do you mean confused? She goes, I don't know if he knew that he was on the show. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, if he was on a stage performing <laughs> jokes, I would assume and that And we had he... Ryan on the show to talk about yeah, his show yeah. and Bill was opening. But he, and... she's specifically talking about Bill, saying that she wasn't sure if Bill knew that he was on the show. I what wanted did to... she think he was? Well, she this said is it a was... weird... Isn't this weird? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm not really understanding what you mean by that. And she goes, he seemed confused. So I don't know if maybe you, ha I wanted to ask you about it. She said that you seemed confused on stage. Like you weren't sure if you were supposed to be there. But did she no. like him? Was he funny? She said he what was did... pretty good. Okay. But that his overall vibe was that she wasn't sure if he knew that he was on the show or not. I didn't even know that was a vibe. I didn't that is so funny. <laughs> 
So, the, well, so my, what was the vibe? Eh, like he wasn't sure if like he was supposed he was to be on stage or not. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I, she couldn't really describe it. She said it was a very weird overall feeling. So I wanted to bring this up to you to this. see what the hell that But meant. Ryan so Hamilton was very clearly, he knew he was supposed to be on stage, yeah, right? I, yes. you know, okay. Yeah, the check cleared. I was supposed to be there. <laughs> like, uh, one of my early jokes in my set is I don't want to be here because I wanted to be a professional athlete when I was a kid. So you think that that's maybe how I guess she hung on. How old is this lady? She's like she's not much older than she's probably around your age. I'd say really? early to mid forties. She's not old. Okay. By any means. That's uh, that's that's hilarious because I mean the show went really I'm well. Like, were you it was it was a really fun crowd. Blinded and you couldn't really see. You're like oh my god, I meant to go to Target. How did I end up here? Like I mean that yeah, I would just. I had a, a, you have no I, explanation. I have no explanation. Like, <laughs> the set went really well. Yeah. Like, I thought it was a lot funny. of fun. Yeah. She said you were great, but she said that you were, uh, you seemed confused. Like, you didn't know you were supposed to be there. And um, obviously then after that, she, she I told her that I knew you and that I work on radio with you. And I'm yeah. also a stand-up. And she was laughing really hard. And I was like, so I don't really know what you could possibly mean by that. And she was like, oh, how funny. What a small world. Blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, I'm very confused. Now I'm confused. Now I'm confused. Now I'm definitely. very confused. But I don't, uh, I don't think I was confused. I didn't walk out there and be like, what's going on? How did I get here? Like, well, that's uh, kind of, she just said you it didn't seem like you knew if you were supposed to be on the show. <laughs> no, what well, a weird no, assessment of a show. All I can think of is there's a few jokes that I had, like where I referenced Ryan's crowd. Okay. And I was like, I knew the crowd would get these jokes more than other crowds because I'm usually like a dirty comic. Sure. So like that's like I made some references like I'm not going to say the words that I would normally say. Like, okay. I didn't use any, like, it was a clean set. But I still alluded to those things. So th that might be what she means. Maybe. Where, where, like, I didn't drop an F-bomb, but I told the crowd that I used a four-letter word okay. in this situation. You guys figure it out. So yeah. maybe it's something like that. And I also, you know, it's it's a Mormon and like real, you know, clean crowd. So you weren't like walking around with like like M M Mr. Magoo or something. Like, <laughs> yes, I was not. I was not doing. A, yes, uh, I did a whole new act where I pretend to be Mr. Magoo. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's, my, that's my clean set. <laughs> well, was she was in the like, third row and close enough to think that he somehow looked confused? She mm -hmm. said that they had great seats, yeah. mm -hmm. and she. Uh, she was very excited to see Ryan. Yeah. She, so she's what she was actually doing downtown. The more that we talked, what she was doing downtown is she's volunteering at Public Square. She's one of those people who stands there with a Bible cart uh -huh. and is like, "Hey, have a pamphlet. Here's oh, uh, okay. how Jesus thinks about mental health." So the more we got to talk, the is more that a thing? Oh yeah, they're all over downtown. A Bible cart? It's like a cart that has pamphlets, oh. and then you hand them out to people. Oh, and you, okay. You know, doing the ministry's work. I see. And um, I guess I, I Heisman those people, so maybe I haven't yeah. noticed that's what they were doing. Well, so she's a big fan of stand-up comedy, and she said she likes clean comedy. So Ryan, right, the worst Naper, people in the world. Napier got seen. Oh. Well, no, because no, I they're mean, the worst people in the world. Are they? You know why? Because they have to tell you they like clean comedy, mm -hmm. and I have no time for that. I have a I, the whole thing about it. You seem very upset. Maybe I, this is why she thought you were confused. Does he know I, he's in front of a clean audience? <laughs> well, I, I did a re very clean set. Like, they had no problem with it. Yeah. But I, I hate the people that are like, oh, it's easier to be a dirty comic. Well, well she know. brought that up. She said that um, that clean comedy is harder to do. And that's one of the comics. Oh, Brian because when Regan. You're, because when you're a dirty comic, you have to deal with people like that. And it's the hardest thing in the world <laughs> to not murder them. <laughs> Do you understand how hard that is, lady, to not just kill you because you say things like, well, clean comedy is harder. Well, so she was saying her favorite comedians are Ryan Hamilton, Nate Bargatze, and Brian Regan. And I mm -hmm. said, those are three of my favorites. Like, I, I'm not yeah. a clean comic, but I really enjoy clean comedy. And um, I invited her I to- good comedy. Yeah. Like, well, well I don't invite, invite her to my- I did. I invited her to your show on the 22nd. <laughs> and I was like, well, I can I guarantee hope she comes. you- I, I do. He won't be confused at the Agora yeah. on December 22nd. He'll know. Oh, he's supposed to be on stage yeah. that night. But I thought and I you'll see it in his face. I've been doing stand up. It'll be. Did you tell her it wasn't going to be a clean show? And I did. No, I FYI. told her. I said, hey, just so you know, like he and I both cut. Because she's like, oh my God, I want to follow you on Instagram. That's so crazy. And I showed her yours. Yeah. I showed her mine. I said, we're both not always clean. We can mm -hmm. work clean. And um, 
she mentioned Nate Bargatze, and I said, I told her, I said, hey, I actually just had this project come out with him last Tuesday. Like, you should check it out on YouTube. It's this whole Nate Land Presents where he talks about, like, up-and-coming comedians. And she was, like, starstruck that I showed her a picture of me and Nate together. Yeah. So I think she's just, like, a very hardcore fan of the people she knows and likes. Yeah. Um, but I have never, in 12 years of stand-up, heard someone describe... A, an act as confused, confused. <laughs> and unsure if they're yeah. supposed to be there. Putting the bi <laughs> by curious and by squad. Uh, <laughs> so I needed to ask you what that could have. Because yeah, I think it was just. I think probably the alluding to certain dirtier versions of jokes that I had where I cleaned them up. And at least you can say yeah. you've never gotten a review like that before. No, that's very probably never will very again. Interesting. But yeah. she said she liked it. She I was hope. like, he was pretty funny. I just he seemed confused. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I thrive on confusion. Yeah. So I like to inject it into my own life and my friends and family. Well, that's it. Jamie right. thought you were confused. What are your thoughts on Tim Dillon? Because I have tickets for him all week. I like him. All right. Well, he's on the American Royalty Tour. That is January 14 out at MGM Northfield Park. So I will hand those off for you right after the break. And then 3.30, it's another 